Have you ever sat there playing a retro RPG and thought, boy howdy, this game is fun, but with a few quality of life changes or a remake, it could be absolutely amazing? I know I have. Welcome to part 4 of my Retro RPGs That Need Remake series. Today, we will be looking at the Game Boy Advance. The Game Boy Advance was a spectacular little handheld, with 81 million units sold. You would be hard stuck to not know at least one person that owned the Game Boy Advance. The Game Boy Advance was, I feel, one of the first handhelds to have an extensive list of JRPGs, and some of them have aged much better than others. I'm here to talk about 10 JRPGs on the Game Boy Advance that could absolutely use remakes. Before we get started today though, did you know? Of everyone that watches this channel, 90% of you are not subscribed. Crazy, right? If you want more JRPG lists and reviews, make sure to show your love by smashing that like button, subscribe to my channel, and tell me which Game Boy Advance games would you love to get a remake. Anyways, enough talk, it's time to get this video started. So ice that drink, pop your corn, and let's talk about 10 JRPGs for the Game Boy Advance that deserve a remake. Fire Emblem, released in 2003 also known as Fire Emblem The Blazing Blade or Fire Emblem 7, was the first Fire Emblem to be released internationally. This game was actually one of my first experiences with strategy RPGs. Fire Emblem follows the story of Lynn, Eliwood, and Hector as they journey together to find Eliwood's missing father Elbert while contesting with a larger conspiracy threatening Alibe. Fire Emblem back in 2003 was nowhere near the juggernaut that it is today but it featured beautiful 2D sprites, and those critical hit animations go hard. Seriously, when you're graced with a critical hit, the animation legit looks like something out of an anime complete with teleporting and multiple attacks. So satisfying to see. Anyways, with Fire Emblem being so popular now, there's no reason for them not to go back and remake the older titles in the same graphical style. Even though I'm pretty sure most people would prefer Genealogy of the Holy War or Thrashia 776, but Fire Emblem The Blazing Blade is one of the best strategy games I've played. When Nintendo, when are we going to see Mother 3 in the West? I feel like the only chance we're ever going to see Mother 3 is in a remake form. Mother 3, released in 2006, is the third game in their Mother or Earthbound series, and is loved by everyone that plays it, with good reason too. Mother 3 has one of the most heart-destroying stories I've ever experienced in a video game. Along with a rhythm turn-based system, it's just a super solid experience. And I mean, Lucas is my main in Smash Bros Ultimate, so there's that too. Really has something to do with the quality of Mother 3, but I thought I'd throw that in there. I just feel that the West deserves to experience Mother 3, and if a remake is the only way to do this, then so be it. It really is inexcusable that we haven't gotten Mother 3 yet. We have Earthbound Beginnings and Earthbound on the Nintendo Online services, so just finish the series! Yes, I know there are licensing reasons for the music, so a remake would be the perfect way to get around that. I really just want to be able to play an officially localized version of Mother 3. Yeah, I know we got remasters, and I understand this is six different games, but hear me out, I have reasons for this. Mega Man Battle Network is an absolute stellar series, however every Game Boy Advance Battle Network game suffers from the same issue. The dungeon crawling! Seriously, the dungeons in these games are some of the most frustrating dungeons in any RPG I have ever played. Not only do the dungeons look exactly the same as one another, say for maybe a color scheme or background that marquees across, every room looks so similar that it's hard to tell where you are in the dungeon, and couple this with an asinine encounter rate, and you're down for a rough time. If I was in charge of a remake, how would I fix it? Well, first of all, make it more of an over-the-shoulder view in dungeons as opposed to the isometric, and get rid of those random encounters. Keep the combat the same, but just pretty it up a little bit, and you would have some spectacular card-based RPGs in your hands. Speaking of which, a top 10 card based battle systems is in the works, so keep an eye out for that. Are you enjoying the video so far? Want to be super cool and amazing? Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more RPG reviews and top 10 lists. 
Uh, isekai RPGs. I love them. And this was one of my favorites. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, released in 2003, is an isekai tactical spin-off of the Final Fantasy series. I'll be honest, I didn't really care for this game with its judge system when I first played it, but I went back to it last year, and it's just as good, if not better than the original Final Fantasy Tactics. Now now, before you throw your fruits and veggies at me, hear me out. I prefer the judge system to not having it. Without certain limitations in battles, every battle becomes the same. Having a judge system stops it from becoming stale by putting certain limitations on what you can do in battle. I feel this would be a game that would greatly benefit from an HD 2D style. Maybe add a few classes, some challenge dungeons, and Bob's your uncle? You have another 10 out of 10 strategy RPG on your hands. Sorry if I offended anyone's Uncle Bob. That was not my intention. Shining Soul, released in 2003, is an action RPG done in the vein of Diablo, and it features four main classes, Warrior, Archer, Dragonute, and Wizard. This is actually a reboot of the Shining Force series. This was one of the first looter-style games I ever played, and honestly, it was just a good time. Normally, I'm not into looters, but with Shining Soul's art style, with the cute chibi art, along with the differences in classes, it's a lot of fun. And if there was a remake, I'd like it just prettied up a little, maybe fix the charge system, and instead of charging, use button combos between light and heavy attacks with multiple dedicated special attack buttons. Has anyone played any of the Shining Soul games? Did you like them? Let me know in the comments below. Summon Knight Swordcraft Story, an action RPG released in 2006. The Summon Knight series has always been a series that I've been interested in. Swordcraft Story was the only one in the series I've played, but it was really a unique experience for me and it really stuck with me. Which is incredibly strange because if you know me at all, I really hate item creation in video games. Unfortunately, I was only able to play it through less than legitimate means. Unfortunately, this series kind of died off with the most recent release of Summon Night 6 as it was received terribly and received really, really bad reviews. Personally, if Swordcraft Story was to get a remake, I'd want to change the quest system, perhaps change up the quests so they aren't just boring fetch quests, and expand the weapon forging system. Maybe unique looking armor and weapon sets too? I want to keep that 2D Tales style battle system though. I love me some Tales. Speaking of which... Tales of the World Narakiri Dungeon 3, released in 2005 is one of the most fanservice of fanservice games in the Tales series. This was actually one of the first games I ever imported. I was debating between Narakiri Dungeon 2 and 3, but eventually decided on the third game because it had more characters. Unfortunately, we didn't get this game localized in the West, which is a shame because I found it way better than the Radiant Mythology games. Of course, I'm also more of a fan of the 2D Tales games as opposed to the 3D Tales games, so that's probably why. With the Narakiri Dungeon titles, you can obtain costumes of past Tales of characters, and with those costumes equipped, you will not only become that character, but be able to use their movesets. This includes not only playable characters like Kles from Tales of Fantasia or Farah from Tales of Eternia, but it also includes boss characters like Barbatos from Tales of Destiny 2 and Yggdrasil from Tales of Symphonia. The gameplay is pretty basic, nothing different from most Tales games, but it is so much fun. I like mechs, you like mechs, everyone likes mechs. And if anyone doesn't like mechs, I'm pretty sure they can't be trusted. Super Robot Tyson Original Generation, released in 2006, is a strategy RPG that uses original mechs as opposed to the rest of the series that uses mechs from various different licenses. As a result, it has a much better story as they're not trying to make sense of several different storylines and fusing them all together. Honestly, this game is pretty much perfect as it is, but not very many people were able to play it because it's kind of a niche series. This game with full anime models and battle sequences would be perfect, kind of like SD Gundam G Generation Cross Rays. That game may have gotten bad reviews, but it looked absolutely gorgeous. Demi Kids released in 2002, was released in two versions, a light version and a dark version. Kind of like in the same way as Pokemon, but more different stories that follow different characters. 
Demi Kids is from the Devil Children series, which is a Shin Megami Tensei spin-off series, kind of like Persona. When I first played this game, I had no idea what it was. I had never heard of the Shin Megami Tensei series. Honestly, I didn't know Shin Megami Tensei was even a thing until Persona 4. Yeah, casual alert. Whatever. However, Demi Kids had such an attractive art style. I really love sprite work and chibi art styles reach out to me. And this game has both of them. This spin-off series kind of went under the radar and a remake would be the perfect way to get it started up again. I would suggest maybe instead of having a light and dark version, perhaps both stories weaved into one and have them join up in the end, giving a more complete experience and a true final boss. You can't have a remake without bonus content, right? Last, but absolutely not least, and one of the main reasons I wanted to do this video, Golden Sun 1 and 2, released in 2001 and 2002. Actually, you know what? Let's throw Dark Dawn into that remake, complete with an actual ending. Golden Sun is the one series that absolutely needs a remake more than any other game on the Game Boy Advance. Not to say Golden Sun is bad, but graphically, it looked amazing on the GBA, which was fine at the time, but playing it on any larger screens, such as through the Nintendo Switch Online, I hate to say it, but that's not even tolerable these days. It just looks like a cluster of pixels and makes it really hard to work out anything. For a remake, first of all, let's combine Golden Sun and Golden Sun 2 into one game, at the very least. It's essentially one game as it is. Perhaps a few quality of life changes, such as auto retargeting. Now that was acceptable in the 80s, but even to this day, I don't understand why Golden Sun had it. It was released in 2000s. A bit of a menu tweak to make it more user friendly, along with the HD 2D art style, and that would give new life into the masterpiece that is Golden Sun. Now you've heard what I would do with a Golden Sun remake, but what would you do to Golden Sun to make it a perfect remake? So there you have it, 10 JRPGs on the Game Boy Advance that need the remake treatment. Okay, there's more than 10, but you stuck around till the end, so gold star for you. While the Game Boy Advance was the first powerful-ish handheld, some games have not aged in the best way, but that's why they deserve some remakes. How do you feel about my list? Did I miss any? What Game Boy Advance RPGs would you add to the list? Let me know in the comments below and let's all chat about it. If you enjoyed your time here and want more weekly JRPG lists and reviews filled with passion and love for the genre, make sure to clobber that like button, smash that subscribe button, and ring-a-ding that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Anyways, thanks for watching, I appreciate every second of your support, and as always, have a wonderful day. Super Retro.